Welcome back to Let's Get Coffee Podcast with uh, me, your host, Jeremy Vanderloo. Uh, we are here sitting at Crest Community's flagship location, and I've got one of my good friends, Dr. Carlos Garcia. You've been, uh, we met when, like a, oh, in April, right? Of, yeah, of yeah last it's been year. some months, definitely. So it's been, I mean, it's coming up on a year. Wow. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. And so um, we're going to be hanging out, just talking. You're a great communicator. It's going to be awesome. We're just, let's... Let's just jump right in. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. You kind of yeah. some of your background, and you guys had a new baby. Totally. Um, so yeah, just the yeah, floor is yeah. yours. You, you know, some of your, your where'd you grow up? Where did you? Uh, you know, your early, you know, twenties, like the good stuff. And pre the yeah. early years. Yeah, the early years. The, you know, all, all of the things that made the man, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was uh, born in Cuba, uh, and we came to. Um, we came to the United States when I was two years old in 1980 with my parents, uh, fleeing Castro's communism. Mm. Uh, and so we ended up settling down in Miami, which is where I grew up. Great town I grew up in. A lot of exciting things going on down there. Um, uh, yeah, and then um, as a lot of my friends were getting ready to go off to college, I decided, uh, well, I felt at the time that school wasn't really for me. I wasn't really college material. That's the story I had. It's uh, fascinating because yeah, it's yeah. doctor. Because now. I'm, a, right, yeah, doctor, right, right, right. Yeah. I got two associate's degree, a master's degree, and a doctor degree, uh, a paramedic school, wow. fire academy, all of that. But at, at the time, my story was I, I'm not uh, college material. Um, and so partly for that reason and partly because I had, in a way, wanted to uh, pay back the country that gave my family so much freedom mm. uh, to to live a lifestyle that we wouldn't have been able to live otherwise. Yeah. Uh, I joined the military, and so two weeks after high school, I found myself uh, on the yellow footprints. So for any Marines <laughs> out there, they know what that Marines. means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, serving in the Marine Corps for uh, about eight years, and um, transitioned out of that into a career as a fireman. Okay. And it seemed like, you know, uh, coming out of being in the military, it seemed like a, a, a good profession to get into, right? If I would have found myself sitting in a cubicle, that would have been yeah. a really hard transition. Wh what municipality were you a firefighter in? Uh, Port St. Lucie. Okay. Port St. Lucie, Florida. So south over here. on the other coast. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and so I did that, got EMT certified, then I became a paramedic. And uh, I did that for about seven years before wow. I had sort of a shift in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we can get into a little bit more of that later. Well, but I do have some questions for you. Yeah, so as, as, as a as a Marine yeah. and then as a paramedic, so that's sure. 15 years. Yeah. Like, so you were 18 when you went in? 18. On that, on that timeline. Yeah, yeah. So now you fast forward, right? Yeah. So 15 plus 18, was that, was that like 33? Yeah, is, right? yeah, yeah. 32, yeah, 32, 33. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So real quick math, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somewhere yeah. around there. Right. So, so you're, you know, you've lived a life now, right? Yeah. You're in the Marines. Were you yeah. deployed as a Marine? I was. Yeah, yeah. where, where yeah. were you deployed yeah. to? Um, I spent uh, the last year of uh, my time and service over in Iraq. Iraq. Yeah. Wow, well, thank yeah. you for your yeah. service. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I love these podcasts because I get to really know yeah. the depths of my yeah. friends. Yeah. And, yeah. and it goes, we, were, we never talked about that. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So you were in Iraq yeah. For, yeah. Uh, while you were in the Marines. And yeah. then you came in and then... Um, you were exposed to seven years in South Florida paramedics. And a lot of my buddies that are firefighters, man, you guys don't get um, enough recognition or understanding right. of the chaos right. that you guys see on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, just stuff yeah. that society really almost like just has no fathomable idea of what's happening on right. a daily. And you guys are there in the crisis and in the thick of just seeing the worst of the worst and the most yeah. chaotic trauma and yeah. pain yeah. and yeah. and it's accidents and all right so it's like some of my buddies they they yeah. that we've talked about this or like yeah, PTSD is a real yeah. thing that's yeah. ignored oh, absolutely. with first responders absolutely. police and fire absolutely uh, i mean i i think there's something about the kind of person the kind of traits the personality that that go into kind of law enforcement and first mm -hmm. responders and and that kind of work um, but it, it does, it, it takes a significant toll. And I think that's part of what led to, um, part of the decision of why I thought, you know, I, I don't, I can't see myself doing another 15 years. Cause you're this. 32, 33 years right. old, single at the time, single at the time, single at the time. So yeah. you're going, so you're having this like epiphany, this, yeah. this, this life yeah. decision of, Hey, yeah. is this my legacy? Yeah. Right. And yeah. that's, that's kind of, I don't you know, I, I always 
whenever I'm mentoring some some guys, I would say, look, man, for some reason, I, and, and I want to know if you if, what you think of this because this is just yeah. what I've seen to be as like a rule, almost yeah. like a law. Yeah. When a guy hits like 28, like 30, yeah. 32, yeah. somewhere in that there is this, oh, it's go time. Right. 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 Now it's like yeah. whatever I'm doing for the next 20 years of yeah. my life will be yeah. the legacy that my life is right and there's right. this like i don't know if, if that hap- if, if you can like that engagement you go yeah. wow is this yeah. like i hit that when i was in the music industry right. you know you just go right. dude is this something i really want to do for the next 15 20 years and you yeah. said that and that's kind of resonated yeah because i had a similar experience yeah. like i do i really want to do this i mean so when when did that yeah. happen for you when did that start occurring so it, it it's it's what you're speaking about but in in my in my life and in my ha- in my mind it was housed a little bit different okay for me, it was, um, you know, here I was doing very rewarding work, um, but the rest of my life felt really empty. Okay. And, you know, I was, and I'm really honest about this, I was single at the time, and, you know, I'd just go out, I'd party, I'd mm-hmm. date, um, you know, hit the gym. I mean, on the outside, on the exterior, it, it really looked like I had my life together. Yeah, of course. Um but on the inside, it didn't feel that way. On the inside, it felt like this can't be all that there is. There needs to be something more than this, something bigger. Wow, okay. Um, and it, it just left me with this feeling of, like, um, emptiness. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, I don't, I don't want to live the rest of my life like this, right? And, you know, I, I looked around at some of the folks on the fire department. Some of these guys, you know, their fathers were firemen. Their grandfathers were mm-hmm. firemen, like you know, th- this was part of their legacy, but it just wasn't mine. Yeah. So, um, I, I went through this sort of dark period and, and was like, okay, I, I need to, I need to step out of this. I need to figure out what's next for me. Um, and, and what's the legacy that I want to live, right? What, what kind of, do I want to have a family? Do I want to, you know, and those are things I think that in the back of my mind, I knew that I wanted for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's sort of how it hit me in the face, right? This idea of like, what's next and what do you need to do to step into what's next for your life. Yeah, and so you're you're into psych- you're, you're a psychiatrist, Is psychologist, psychologist. Yeah. yeah, thank you for yeah. Cor- yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we've talked yeah. about this. Far I always get yeah. What's well, the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist? I, I mean, essentially, a psychiatrist goes to medical school okay. and then specializes in psychiatry. They can prescribe medications and okay. things like that. A psychologist is going to go to grad school, study five or six years of uh, psychology, whatever field. Mine is particularly clinical. Some people do research. Some people do organizational psychology. Uh, so different things. Um, and then they get their doctorate degree in, in that particular field. Yeah. So so you could try to so – the psychiatrist gives medicine. Right. And you get to the root. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, we, there's nothing wrong with the yeah. medicine. No. Right? But it's like that's only going to be half of your thing. Right. right to, to well, let's get to the what's like what's causing this. Yeah, and, and I you know I know this is a strong statement and might not be liked by a lot of people out there, but I think psychiatry in this country has become really a a, a band aid. Right, like now there are some yeah. you know conditions that you know really require medication, and for those that's great. But what has started to happen is that some folks that struggle with some other mental health conditions that if they went to therapy and put in a little bit of the work, mm-hmm. they can really get to the root of it and not have it be an issue anymore. Um, and by using well, medication, you know, it's a huge principle. Though, it is. Right? I, it I, is. I believe in like the laws of physics and yeah. these eternal principles totally. that are this linear, complicated motion yeah. within housing our complex right ecosystems. Right, 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 right. And so, a lot of these quick fix movements that we have in our culture, it's putting a band aid over a bullet hole. Yes, right. That's the, like that's been the best Perfectly way I've said. found to describe that. Like band aid over a bullet hole. You know, it works when you're in a firefight, right? You know, and you're, right. you you got to put a bandage, get pressure on it. Right. But I got to stitch that thing up. I got to get yeah. that bullet out of there. Yeah. We got to have surgery, make sure the muscles are good, right? And that's kind of what I hear, hear you saying. Exactly. It's like the band-aids are okay. Yeah. They work for a while. But what happens, even, you know, you being a Marine and a firefighter, what happens if somebody just continually keeps putting a band-aid, right. a bandage on a gun right. wound? Yeah. Over time. Yeah. Gangrene, yeah. infection. Yeah. And right? the, the stuff t- keeps seeping out. And it's yeah. sort of the, the, the term I use is like, if we're not working on ourselves and understanding, right, what's what's under the hood, right, where the root problem is, then these things start seeping out into our relationships, mm. into our work, into everything that we do. Yeah, it absolutely does. And um, I, I, I resonate a lot with that. Like, yeah. get to the root, get to your why. And why did I, what, what made my decision making right. make that call? Like, right. why? You know, and I mean, you know, we've talked about this. Like, we're yeah. dealing in our own home with just the, 
emotional intelligence of our children with my, the right. trauma that my wife th- went right. through their last right. pregnancy. And, and you, you've been such a good friend just to, Thank you know, you, have that, that, that back and forth, yeah. Yeah. you know, encouragement conversation with each other. Thank you. And, uh, but it's just this whole heartbeat of just like, you know, how do we, like, I'm, I'm full on in this space where I'm sure you see a lot of it in right. your, in your profession of just seeing my boys have their fight or flight their you know, their lids are popped constantly having to teach them how to, you know, the lizard brain and the, yeah, yeah, you know, the yeah. human brain, right? And all that stuff just took... All of it. But I love how it's simple. I've had to under like explain it to a six-year-old. Yeah. yeah. You know, because yeah. so many of us have like a six-year-old and a 50-year-old's body. Absolutely. Right? That little six-year-old boy who's, you yeah. know, scared yeah. and afraid yeah. is there. Yeah. And that's why I think it's it's pretty awesome. Like, with because you're specializing in, like, you, you just got... You changed your, your handler on, on yeah. Instagram, yeah, right? Yeah, I yeah, loved yeah. it. Yeah. I was trying to figure out, who is this? They're commenting <laughs> all over the place. And I realized it was you. What, so you, your handler says it all, right? Yeah, so what's, yeah. your, what's your new handler on Instagram? The entrepreneur psychologist. The entrepreneur psychologist, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so you are like, hey, I want to go after this group of people that are just gutsy they're going they're taking risks they're going after it they're changing things they're creating right. solutions but i want to help them understand how to live their entirety fully fully yeah right not just crush it over here right and a firefighter and, and for a lot of you know. those that aren't taking the risks mm. that are brilliant okay yeah Let's that talk have, about that. That, right that are brilliant mm-hmm. but aren't taking the risk because of something within them that they may not even know is there i call yeah yeah. Paralysis through analysis is the term that we totally. use, right? So, so let me use, let, you know, I, I want to sort of illustrate through, through my own experience an example of what you were just talking about. Yeah. My relationship with anger okay. and impatience, right? Mm-hmm. Um, do you think those are two traits that might impact an entrepreneur's ability to make decisions within their business? Hands down. Oh, my God. All right? day. Like, All day. Like, so much. So well, Every day you're getting ripped off by somebody or something's breaking. Or, exactly. You know, exactly. <laughs> and how are, you, how are you showing up and handling those issues? So, yeah. for me, um, again, you know, I use my story. Like, I grew up in a home that was somewhat chaotic. And what I mean by that, you know, my parents' relationship wasn't great. They argued a lot. Um, my dad was somebody that was raised by an angry father. So, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of tolerance for anything short of perfection, Right. Um, So what that develops into for a lot of people, that sort of trauma, there was just trauma there. Right. Physical trauma. I mean, I used to see it as like, oh, that's how a you know, that's how I was just raised. Right. But um, and while that's true, um, those kinds of things impact the young developmental child's mind in a very different way. Mm. So for me, because there was an angry adult in the house, I constantly had to live almost from like a place of fear. Like, Hey, is that angry today? Right. And so you're, you're constantly assessing the environment, Mm -hmm. looking for danger. What happens for a lot of people is that that gets wired deep into the unconscious. Mm -hmm. And when you get older, you're constantly looking at the world from a place of fear, Mm -hmm. from the place of what's right. The other shoe dropping, this bad thing's going to happen to me. And we start to be risk averse. That's interesting. Right. So for me, the reason I became a psychologist was because I went through my own therapy for many years to understand my wiring, to understand my thought patterns, to understand my behavioral patterns. And I was able to understand, wow, my frustration and anger shows up in these ways. And this is how I respond. This is how I shut down. This is how I react. This is how I push people away. Right. Through having that knowledge now at my accessible to me, I can then make changes when those things start to come up, when a business decision goes awry, when, um, right, you're on the brink of maybe taking your business to that next level and that little bit of fear comes up. Mm -hmm. Instead of responding to that fear, I can say, oh, that's just a story. That's a narrative based on how my life happened Mm -hmm. to turn out. I don't have to respond to it. I can take this different road. Yeah. Right? Right. So just a small example of what I mean. Yeah, Mindset is everything. And, yeah. you know, it's not to, to blame a parent. It's not to sit and steep in your trauma or any of that. It's having that information just like you would if you're a business owner and you're sitting down with your financials. It's just more data points for you to access yeah. so that you can know how to make the right decisions moving forward. Yeah, and it's <clears throat> it's just creating, you're able to like learn like your mechanisms, yes. right? And just going, all right. And that's, you know, I created uh, this process that I myself follow. And then what I'm walking on now is this going from solopreneuring to entrepreneuring, right, is a whole nother different thing with <clears throat> people that are looking for you and employees and yeah. even what we're doing here. That's so, 
you know, transactional ran like weekly, daily, weekly, monthly versus like quarterly and annually and, you know, biannually um, deal flows. Yeah. And so you're, you're processing through and you're like, all right, this is going to, there's a heck of a lot more conflicts that occur, yeah. pressure points that can occur. Yeah. And it's uh, very easy to crack underneath that. It's very easy to get sharp, to get short, to get, and, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of times where you get that tunnel vision too. And you got to try yeah. to focus in and get, but it's all about yeah. your infrastructure of systems that you're applying that are principled your entire life. So I have this so thing, like, have we talked about the five P's yet? No, tell me about the yeah, five P's. So it's this thing that I, I created for myself and yeah. now I'm pouring it into my guys as part of like my company culture. Um, there's the three E's, the four C's and the five P's. Yeah. And about the five P's is how to handle conflict. Ooh. And it's uh, you pause. Love it. You pray. You press into that. You prepare, and then you pursue the conflict as radically as you can because the cheapest time that conflict ever is is the moment you've discovered it. Beautiful. So you don't like, you know, you, you and <clears throat> we have this thing that we say that I've learned from Todd Hopkins, which is an unbelievable. I don't know if you, if you met Todd yet. I haven't he, met He was Todd, at our, no. our one of our last Crest Chats. It's actually, when we did the mental health, you were on the first yeah. series. Yeah, yeah. Todd was on the second. Yeah. Todd is Got this it. amazing author and speaker and entrepreneur. But he teaches reacting versus or responding versus, versus reacting, reacting, right? And he goes, and that's the whole point is the process of response tied to your mind, understanding of what, and so much of that five P's is going, what's going on in this individual's position? What was their intent? And you're really analyzing two things. Mm -hmm. Was it malicious or not? Right. And that's the five P's. Yeah. Because yeah. if it's a malicious intent. Yeah the approach is way different. Sure. Then I made a mistake. Sure. Right. And that, that's at least how I, how I teach it. It's like, yeah, Hey, yeah, yeah. Well, all I'm trying to do is make sure that I'm not blowing up on somebody and giving right. some of my brokenness right. and my pain. So I'm going to yeah. pause. I'm going to pray. Love that. Press into that. I'm going to prepare a response yeah. and I'm going to pursue it. And you know, and it's just until, and you're pressing in on truth and you're, you're really just trying to find out if this was malicious or not. Absolutely. And I but, love what you said there about, responding instead of reacting because yeah. I think we, we are a very reactive society, yeah. right? We, we just want to instant instant, right? We, yeah. we filter through information really quickly and decide this is how I want to respond. So, you know, sort of going back to what I was saying, um, when we understand ourselves, like what is the way in which I react to the world? Yeah. Right. And again, you know, I know people have different stories, but like if you grew up in an environment where it, it, cultivated you to be someone who needs to react quickly. Of course. Yeah. Right. Like, like that's it, a natural it, health. Right. Well, it's not healthy all the time, but it's a natural thing in our DNA. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know? like we came to this country as immigrants with nothing. Yeah. Right. And, and so we, we came from a, a country that was, you, you know, you experience a lot of fear around, you know, what the government is doing and things like that. So all of those things lead to us being reactive and scared and mm -hmm. fearful and so if in those moments, like you're saying, you can reflect on what's going on for me. This is something I teach all of my therapists, right? Yeah. Not just what's going on with that person in the room and what they're bringing in, but what is your response to what they're bringing in? Because that is just as important to know. So I, I love this. I love it. Well, because you, you have to, right? And you have to, as a leader, and that, that's my that's my heart, but I love yeah. leading leaders. I love spending time with other leaders yeah. and going, look, as a leader, your responsibility is to understand who you're leading and how, why they're thinking the way they think. And that's, I can't remember who came up with it, but I learned it from my friend, Steven, who's a, an, an executive here. And he, I think he learned it from an executive coach, mm -hmm. but he came, he taught me the four C's and that was uh, the effective, how to build an effective team yeah. is the four C's. Yeah. So it's, it ties right into the five P's. The four C's is when you're bleeding people and bringing people like into your family. Yeah. Right. Of yeah, your yeah, business yeah, yeah, yeah. is, What's their character? Have you heard this before? The four no. C's? Oh, yeah. the four C's are, yeah. it, 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 it's again into my core. I love this. Core I love values. this about you, by the way. That you, you have these like, these principles and like, right? They're, they're just. I have to have them. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. My ADD I love will it. kick in. I love, I, I, love right? it. I love It's it. my own structure that yeah. I, to keep me focused. And yeah. I, I repeat them almost every day or weekly. And because uh, it's a fil it's a filtration right. system to keep, to just keep me to make sure that I'm, I'm doing well. I'm a good steward of those around me as a leader. Yeah. But it's the four C's of like hiring and building a team. What's the character, who they are on the inside? Mm -hmm. What's their culture, the lens in which they see things mm -hmm. through? It's very important to understand someone's culture because if someone, if something occurs and you know the background of the individual, right. like, hey, you know, and it's a subconscious thing, right. but hey, 
when this thing hits and Carlos freaks out on you, right? Yeah. You're like, if you're practicing the five P's, you're processing yeah. your, and you're trying to put yourself in that person's yeah. shoes. Yeah. Why do they respond this way? Right. And that's where it Cause, comes Because maybe it's not the situation, right? Yeah. Maybe the situation set them off, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't set off the next five people, right? Exactly. So uh, coming into that place of compassion and yeah. understanding, oh, it's something particular about this person. Yeah. It really lets you dissect the thing a little bit easier, right? Well, it's also if, you, if you're praying enough and pausing enough and processing through it enough, you're giving that person time to breathe and you're not reacting. Like there's so many times, you know, with one of my guys that I'm very close with, we'll just yeah. say that. Um, where we, we, uh, we clash all the time is my yeah. brother. He works yeah. for him. Yeah, works yeah, with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> we had one time where like, he's been under a ton of pressure. He had right. all this, everything going wrong, you know, and, and all this stuff with vehicles and, and, uh, he was really just wanting to vent in one of our, like our meetings. Yeah. And I did what a little brother should never do. And that was, I don't want to hear it. Just stop. Right. I don't treat anybody else that way, but right. somehow, you know, it's like, there's right. that brother right. thing. Of course. And he storms off and leaves. He says, I'm out of here. I'm done with this and yeah. drives home. He lives 45 minutes away, <laughs> you know, and I'm sitting there practicing this. I go, all right, I'm not going to one. I'm not going to let that. I'm not going to chase after it. We're going to just, we have a task. We're trying to, because so, I need to honor this team right here. Right. And so that's now they're got to see how I'm responding. There's no favoritism here. Yeah. All that stuff, right. That's playing in. And I'm going, all right, we're going to stay on task. And then about an hour later, two hours later, I text him. Hey, you coming back? Mm-hmm. And he goes, yeah, I'm, or I said, where are you? He said, I'm at home. I said, I said, are you coming back? Yeah, I'll be back. And he came back, you know, four hours later, five hours later. We didn't say a word about it. He's got in, and his heart, he had this different position of gratitude. Um, you know, and I don't, we, ne- we didn't even talk about it. It yeah. was just that whole culture. Yeah. Of, well, it, it, it sounds happens, like there was right? a, a deeper understanding that Has transpired to be. there. You have to be like, all right, this dude. So, but as a leader, you have to go, yeah, that's a, against my agenda right now. Right. You know, right? And uh, but you go. What's four hours to somebody who's extremely loyal, who 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 implements vision, and who does? And you just go. And that's where culturally and character, you have to see who the person is, the lens, and then the the other two was um, competency. Can they actually do the job that they're tasked to do? Right. And the other one was uh, chemistry. Chemistry. Chemistry is the most important. Tell me about that, chemistry. To be honest with. All right. So there's some really. So you like this? this like these this. are really good. You could use these. So the chemistry. So uh, we used to flip houses, right? Yeah. Now, we, now we flip commercial buildings. We're probably—I don't know if we're going to get back in the residential stuff, but uh, we we flipped we flipped some properties yeah. a time yeah. or two. And uh, <laughs> and the best part of like building a team, and that's why I had to really start practicing these four right. C's and the five pieces, was dealing with contractors, right? Because yeah. nothing with contractors, nothing. I love I love them. <laughs> Subcontractors, I love them. Can't live life without them. Yeah. And and, <laughs> but they are contractors those subcontractors because a lot of times they don't they 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 really have a position of control and rebellion half Mm -hmm. the time right they Mm -hmm. they don't so some of them come from pretty rough backgrounds they don't all have college educations they you know so it's a different form of society it's blue collar sure right and you have to really and they're very rough tough and you got to get rough and tough with them but you got to make sure you're putting honey on it instead of vinegar right right, right, you know because you got to get a job done so you have to get through this stuff all the time so you have to practice these things yeah it is the best place for anyone who thinks they want to be an executive. They need to go on a job site and pick up some trash, you it. know, for a little bit because totally. it's important. But humility, um, humility right? Yeah. So I'm around these guys. I always treat I always treat my trade guys very well. Yeah. Um, there was this group though, and this is the best way. So competency, they were great, unbelievable. Um, character, the guy actually had pretty good character. It was a little. He just it was unorganized, right. but uh, would quote something, and then and then he would just charge. So it's, uh, so I think his character was still there, but I just think he was unorganized. Um, culturally, you know, he just I understood where he was coming from. Right. You know, he was trying to step out on his own. He went from W two, but the chemistry is where it blew up. Right, right. So we're there, and we got all these trade guys. We got plumbers underneath the house. We got carpenters there. We got painters like, and uh, all of a sudden. We hear this plumber screaming, and this guy, uh, who was doing a finish finish trade, was peeing in the toilet that the plumber was working on underneath, oh, and no. there's pee going everywhere, <laughs> on this plumber's oh, face, no. all this stuff. And I go, "Oh, that plumber's mad." Yeah. All right, and then I start looking around, and goes, "That guy's mad," at the same team of other guys. Yeah. That uh oh, I'm looking at like my right hand guy, he's furious. I go, "Okay, there is a breakdown in chemistry. The guys are competent." But they had zero chemistry on the, on, on the site. Right. And so it was immediate wow. 
wow. termination of contract. Wow. It was that fast because yeah. I thought, you know what? Yeah. That's how much chemistry matters on the four C's because it doesn't matter. How, and they were cheap. They were affordable. The product was unbelievable, right? So they they, they were on the bottom line, right. the best pick on a bottom line. But the chemistry was but The there. chemistry was off. And I'm looking, so what yeah. is this going to cost me? Ooh. 10 deals from now right. if my favorite plumber is no longer my plumber because he has to work with this guy or he now charges me two times because mm-hmm. he knows he's going to get urine on his face <laughs> right, right? <laughs> you know there's these different things that are yeah. occurring and yeah. it was just the chemistry and that cost that right. trade t- like a ton of money yeah because we were doing a bunch of deals that year totally. and we, he was going to be our main guy and he lost a lot of revenue right. because he just his chemistry just wasn't there. Yeah. You know what I love about what you just said is, is right. Like the vision as a leader that in this moment of crisis, your vision is out up front. Like, what is this going to cost me down the road yeah. if we don't handle this well? Exactly. Right. That's the whole point is yeah. like speed and accuracy. Right. right? That's why right. you have these things. Yeah. And the five P's are sometimes like 30 seconds right. a minute. Right. Sometimes you have to really yeah. respond. It yeah. looks like a reaction, yeah. but you just calculate it. Right. And right. Not to ramble, you're you're the psychologist. No, I love it. I love it. I mean, look, I'm just we're, passionate we're about your field. Totally, man. We're amazing. we're um, we're also just a, a species of animal, right? Just like all the other ones out there, and and we come with um, you know in our DNA, you know, emotions, right? Like ways of responding, like you know those those things are just a part of us. And how do we learn to manage those things? Regulate right? them. Yep. Regulate. They're good. They're important. Absolutely. I want that yeah, fight or flight. They need to be there. When a bear's chasing yeah, me. Yeah, they need to be there. I straight want that. You right. know, if an alligator's coming after my baby. Right. Right? That's like, I yeah. want that mechanism to just jump in So many in people are go. like, hey, I, you know, I just, I want to get rid of all fear. And I'm like, well, I don't think that's healthy. That's not no. good for you. How are you going to know when, when, when things are going astray, when something's coming yeah. for you that yeah. doesn't need to be in your life, right? Like, we don't want to get rid of all of it. We want to get part, you know, rid of the unhealthy parts of it. Yeah, yeah. How, so we talked about this a little bit, and I just love this dialogue. And I'm so passionate about the subject that it's very easy for me to uh, into yeah. it. Um, so, so we have this thing, right? You have anxiety. Yeah. Right, that do people deal with and yeah. fear, yeah. and if, there's two forms of fear, mm-hmm. right? Do you do you agree? Do you know where I'm going with this or no? No, not yet. So there's 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 the respectful fear, sure, right, and there's the terrified fear, yeah. You know, yeah. Like I respect this, yeah. I'm fearful of yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, there's a lion there, yeah. I respect you. Right. There's a grizzly there. I respect right. you, right? Right. Because yeah, what are you supposed to do, yeah. right, with that yeah. predator? Yeah. You're supposed to, right? You right. know, uh, uh, there's a shark. Totally. I fear you yeah. and what you're able to do to me. Yeah. I respect you, yeah. but I'm not afraid of you. Right. I'm not terrified of you. Right. And if I am, right. Right. I have right. to overcome that because if I show that, you're going to eat me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, you know. That's a good example, actually. That, I love yeah. it. I love it, right? Um, here's one of the sort of theories on, on, you know, how we are experiencing so much anxiety as a, as a, as a, as a culture right now and as a society um, is that that fight or flight response is wired into us from our ancestors, right? Again, it helped us to um, evolve as a species to where we are today, right? If we didn't have that in us, we, we, we wouldn't exist as human beings. Um, however, because that is deeply wired into our mechanism, now we live in a world where you don't have to worry about a tiger coming at you day to day. Yeah. Right. But that, thing is still a, tiger, a part yeah. of our brainstem. It's still a part yeah, of our brain, yeah, yeah. right? So yeah. we, we start to experience that fight or flight around stressors that are mm-hmm. constantly there, traffic, deadlines, mm-hmm. work, family, right? And so because that's constantly being activated, it's creating a reinforced pattern within us mm. to be afraid of things we shouldn't be afraid of. So for a lot of people, that anxiety and that fear and that worry is coming from um, from de- a deep wiring in the brain about the future, right? A lot of anxiety is fear about the future. Hands down, fear of the right? outcome. Fear of the outcome. Yep. What's going to happen and how am I going to handle that? And so it's is very much is it, yeah. it's very right. much tied to our thinking process. Hands down. Our thinking, Absolutely. our thoughts, our thoughts, our thoughts. And, you know, I, I can relate to this because I, I, I used to battle anxiety pretty bad to the point where I, had, I would even have panic attacks sometimes because I'm an analyzer. I'm a thinker, right? It makes me great at my job, but in my personal life, not so great sometimes. I'm spinning my wheels, right? Yeah. And so uh, imagine what happens to the fight or flight response if you're sitting there thinking about all of the possible outcomes to this problem, all of the possible ways that you have to try and handle this problem. And again, it's just all happening in the brain, but the body's responding the same way. Mm-hmm. So the heart starts to race. That whole fight or flight cascade yeah. of, of, 
uh, hormones is being activated. And what that's causing is a further reinforcement, right? Anxiety, body response, fear. Mm -hmm. And then we just keep falling to that over and over again. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm an uneducated man in so many ways. As You're I'm the most educated, <laughs> uneducated man I've ever met. I mean, I've just never been to school, right? Yeah, I've yeah, never, yeah. never been to college. And, and I've just all, you know, read a lot, study a lot. Yeah, yeah. Have real good street smarts. Yeah. Real good critical thought. Yeah. Right? And so I, early on, probably late 20s, I started processing through. And it's really self-analyzing, like my own, like what I'm going through. Right. And then putting it, and some people even laugh at like how I'll do like, spreadsheets or how to do this or that yeah. and they're like this you can tell you just figured it out and it worked in your right. own way right. and so I, I started processing through I said you know what I need to turn this whatever so I started realizing hey there's this one thing that's right here mm -hmm. that is starting to cause this feeling in me and I started analyzing creation and analyzing things around me I said all right so stress stress crack stress causes cancer, stress causes this stress. And then you start seeing all these things. Right. And then I started thinking about pressure. What does yeah. pressure do? Yeah. Pressure creates diamonds. Yeah. Pressure. If you put it the right way with the right guidance system, a lot launches rockets. Yeah. Right. You have all these different things. And so I began to process, you know, I need to create a guidance missile system for this energy, this, this thing. Energy. Right. Perfect. Energy. It's energy. Yes. And it's so it's your decision on how you process that energy. Right. And so much of the of life, right, that is just coming down and barreling down on you. And it doesn't matter mm -hmm. if you're doing all these crazy things and running governments and dealing with trillions of dollars and deficits and yada, yada, yada. Or if it's like just worrying about how you're going to feed yourself, yeah. right, um, and everything in between. Yeah. And it, it's this, the feeling and the energy is the same. Totally. It's bearing down on you. Yeah. And so much of this is the cognitive response to your systematic process and community. Where do your thoughts go? Yeah, where do your thoughts go? And then how do I take this freight train and you learn how to the, do the principle of countersinking it yes. and using the energy for propulsion yes. rather than destruction? Yeah. I was at a, a Tony Robbins uh, seminar a couple of years back, one of his uh, Unleash the Power. The one in him. Orlando? Uh, the one in Miami. Yeah. And... Um, he was talking about, uh, actually, I don't remember, but what I know that I was able to sort of flip in my mind was like, oh, this energy, right? This energy mm -hmm. that I feel, this like tense yeah. energy that lives within me. Oh, it's not anxiety. It's hunger. Sure. When I feel I'm not being challenged or even when I am being challenged, this like internal thing to want to grow, expand through it, break create, through, right? to create. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's hunger. That's vision. That's not... Fear. Yeah. And so sometimes we just need to rewire the, 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 the label yeah. that we give to that energy. Yeah. So and, and you're exactly right. And so much of it is, is, uh, is identifying ambition, identifying identity, yeah. right? The yeah. why I'm doing something, right. right? I always, you know, I kind of coin a little bit like human, human currency is really affirmation. Yeah. Like that's what we just like. Yeah. That's all we, if you yeah. want to break anything down about humanity, everyone's just going after affirmation. Totally. That's it. They're like, Hey, yeah. I really like this watch. I like this car. I like yeah. this, how this looks. I like, you know, this, this house I live in, the neighborhood I live in. Right. So it comes down to affirmation. Yeah. Naturally. Like, yeah. That, that, that good feeling on yeah. the inside. And you have to get into this point where you go, I don't need affirmation from that. Right. I can find affirmation from myself. Absolutely. And those that I value. Yeah. Right? And that was a game changer for me in my yeah. own life. Right. I Let's noticed the, that. The, yeah, the ways that I was right. I think that's, sort of what happened to me going back to that story when I was yeah. 32, 33 was I had developed a life where I was getting all of this external validation on the outside, mm -hmm. but empty on the inside because I hadn't learned to give it to myself. Yeah. Right. So when I realized that I don't need a nice car, I don't need a nice watch. I don't need mm -hmm. fancy clothes. I don't need friends, you know, telling me I'm the best to feel that internal yeah. affirmation. Oh, wow. The sky's the limit now, my friend. The sky's the limit, right? Because if if I can stay rooted in in my truth and understand that I am a person of value mm -hmm. um, in this world without those external things, then yeah. what you know, just what, for what who can you I are. create from here? Just for who you are, right? 
right? That right. every individual has a treasure map in them. Beautiful. Right? It's a 5%. Yes. It's, it's that my, my mentor taught me it was the 80 20 rule. Yeah. Right? 80 20. Anytime there's these numbers, I love. Yeah. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You're like, oh, dude, there's a pattern. Yeah. Let's identify Let's, this yeah. pattern. Let's see. There's yeah. a principle there. We get on. And so my, my mentor taught me, he's like, look, man, there's an 80 20. Yeah. Of every individual, eighty percent of everything you do. have we talked about this or no? No, no. Oh, it's so no. good. I wish I, I love made sitting it. down with you. I wish I came it. up with it because it, it's. I, I, but I have to give credit where credit. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. My friend Larry, who I just love dearly, he uh, he he spoke this to me. He said, eighty percent of everything you do." He was like seventy three, right? Yeah. So everything, eighty percent of everything you do, somebody else should can do and should do. Just get it off your plate. Love that. Fifteen percent of everything you do, somebody else could do with proper training and proper compensation. 5% of everything you do from the moment you're born to the moment you die. No one in history that has been before you or will be after, after you, you can do that exact same 5%. Wow. And inside your, fi- your 5% is your purpose, your wow. calling. And then what I believe through my philosophy, yeah. I call it the 1129. Everyone has an 1129, and it's the gifts and call of God are irrevocable. Mm-hmm. And so that you have this beautiful gifting in you. And this beautiful gift for humanity, yeah. it's a treasure map yeah. that you get to now search through your entire life, hunting for your why, your 5%. And the coolest thing is you are born equipped with the tools to actually achieve it. Totally. You just now get to process through right. and just understand your why. Like, why am I going to do this? Find your vehicle. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go pick this job because it pays you a bunch of money. That's totally against how you're naturally wired. Right. You're going right. to be stressed and anxious, yeah. and it's going to be unfulfilling because yeah. you went after it versus, you know, I'm doing this. Like, I'm going to break my career as a, uh, a fireman. I'm going to go after this whole thing in my, you know, and everyone's like, you're starting to look at it. And that's where, like, John Maxwell, the, the comparison is thief of all joy. Have you heard that? No. Oh, man, it's this thing that's no. really gone gone viral. Yeah. But it's like comparison is a thief of all joy. Oh, yeah. I right? agree. And you just go at 32, 33 you could be easily comparing, be, oh, this guy's already going on in his career. He's got children. He's married. What am I doing starting over Look again, right? Mm-hmm. And you go, that fear starts yeah. kicking in. Oh, what is everyone going to think of me if I do this? If I, what is my family going to think of me? What if I, all, you know, all that stuff. And, and so you just, but. And if you're someone yeah. that deals with any sort of doubt yeah. in, in yeah. your life, um, I've noticed the ways, even, even recently, um, where when I sit in quiet, right? For me, meditation and prayer, mm-hmm. right? I, I sit in quiet. It allows me to get to that still, quiet voice, mm-hmm. that gut, that intuition that guides me, mm. God, right? God. Yeah. Right? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's clear what I'm supposed to do. Absolutely. But then it's we start thinking, right? Mm-hmm. Or we start sharing it, and people share their doubts, which is maybe coming from their fear. And then we start second-guessing ourselves. Yeah. I saw this happen to me recently, Yeah, right? And I was like, oh, wow. I caught it in the day. I had mm-hmm. had three conversations with people about a decision I wanted to make that was somewhat risky. And they were like, oh, great, Carlos. And like, wow, you should, are you sure you want to do that? And I caught myself at the end of the day starting to wonder. I was like, this morning when I sat to pray and meditate, I was re- there was nothing that was going to remove me from that path. Did we have a conversation about we this? Did. Okay. We did. We uh, did. That was the day did that it happened. Did mine encourage you or no? You, you encouraged me, and there was a part that was like, are you sure you want to do that? Yeah, yeah. And well, where I'm sitting now yeah. is that I went, I inter- I I went internal to that, and I was yeah. like, well, yeah, there was some fear there for me. Um and, oh, there was also some conviction. I was getting ready mm-hmm. to make a move without maybe giving this further thought. Counsel, right? You have counsel. Right. And it, right? You have wise counsel. Right. You have to have that board right. of advisors on your right. life. Right, right, so right, just, right. Yeah, that's a great thing to talk about. Yeah. That's like what, what we were kind of doing so, that so day. Two know, things, that, yeah, two about. things about that. Yeah. One, to not allow, right, where other people are, what they're doing, because we were just talking about mm-hmm. comparison. Forget about that. The, the thing is within you, that 5%. I love yeah. that. I'm going to hold on to that. Please do. Dearly, dearly. Yeah. Um, but, but also coming back to what we were talking about earlier, to understand how you work, how your mind works, mm-hmm. where you go to, why you make decisions the way that you do. And when I sat down with all of that information, I was like, oh, okay. I saw where the fear was coming up. Mm-hmm. I saw where I was actually being given good counsel. Yeah. And the part of me that sometimes can be a little bratty. He's like, no, I'm going to do it my way. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I was like, actually, that was really good counsel, (laughs) right? And a couple of other people have given me sort of similar advice. So I had to be open to like, okay, put my ego aside. Start pairing it together. And that's that's what a a board of advisors is for your life. Yeah. 
right? And I, I'm a huge fan. Yeah. I've, I've had a BOA of my life since I was 25. Yeah. And they've they fluctuated, but any major decision I had to make since yeah. I was 25, um, anything, I would call five people, and they all five had to sign off on it, or I wouldn't make it, wow. or I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Right? And yeah. it was this, and what I found by doing that, I love that we're talking about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, is what I found by doing that, even in my early, I feel like I've lived like six lifetimes <laughs> because of just some of this early wisdom yeah. I was I, I, I was able to operate in. And but I, I found out that I would get five different angle and viewpoints of risks, and I was able to have build a three dimensional wow. strategy. Nice, not by my own perception, but by the relative position of everyone else's thoughts and filtration systems, knowing who they were and that they cared for me, yeah. and that they didn't discourage me. Because yeah. that's where people have to be careful. If yeah. you're listening to this, you gotta be careful yeah. who you let speak into your life. Because yeah. I remember, I, 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 there's no, I didn't, I intentionally. Yeah didn't discourage it. Yeah. I didn't Can say Can I ask that's you a question yeah, about ahead. that? Yeah. Um, something that's just sort of coming up for me and yeah. maybe this is, you know, coming from my own stuff, right? But like beautiful, right? These five different perspectives of five different people that maybe mm -hmm. have gone on and, and lived differently. Um, was there ever a moment where, you know, you, you received all of this beautiful counsel and there was still a part of you that said, yeah, but I really feel that this is what I need to do. Of course. Yeah. Of yeah. course. And, 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 and what did you do in terms of like, where did you put your trust in that? So at the end of the day, you, when you pick wise counsel over yeah. your life, and this is a, I mean, thousands of years people have been doing this. Yeah. Bible, the Bible talks about this. Yeah. Other, other writings talk about this yeah. stuff, right? Surrounding yourself with wise counsel. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a very ancient practice yeah. that, that people should still, totally. they, they should, they still practice yeah. this. And at the end of the day, your counsel is actually never giving you advice. What they're doing, because the, if they give you advice, they can take credit for it if it wins or if it loses. Your counsel is going, interesting thought, and they ask more questions. And, they, and then they give a shared experience. Hey, like uh, case in point, I was going to refinance my house, yeah. um, pay off my debt, or I was going to pull a HELOC out of my house, pay off my debt, increase my credit score to over 800 Decrease my DTI so I could afford on paper to go to the next phase of building my next house, Got it. which is my next phase of wealth. Right. And again, my brain works differently. Right. So I did that, and all the advice that came through said, fascinating idea on paper. And this is actually from like my, that same yeah. mentor. Yeah. That, and he goes, I'm no, everyone who I've spoken to in, before that has decided to do this, none of them actually fully followed through, and they're in a worst case scenario. Maybe you're different. And that was all he said. He said, everyone's had this desire. I've not seen anyone actually execute it yeah. to the degree that they always say they will. Maybe you're different. Yeah. So, so. Which is what, enough what, challenge. Yeah. What I'm hearing here is, right. I am different. You finding, know, I'm going to do this. Finding counsel that can sort of reflect back to you. Yeah. Right. It's sort of how I, I, sh I this is kind of how, the kind of psychologist I am. I never give advice. I don't yeah. tell you what to do. I'm going to reflect back to you what I'm seeing in your patterns of thinking of course, and behavior of course. and let you make the decision on your own. And if it's a shitty one or a bad one, yeah. like you got to live through that. Right. Ancient like, proverb. The totally. purpose of a man's heart, a purpose of a person's heart is like deep waters Yeah, and the wise draw it out. Love it. So, so finding counsel that yeah. can sort of reflect back to you exactly. instead of giving you advice. Well, you have all the answers to your crisis. Totally. It's we all do. You. We all do. You know, you just sometimes need the extra questions. Right. It's about asking questions rather than giving advice. I love that. And that's huge because yeah. if I give you advice, I can get credit. Yeah. If I give you advice and you fail, yeah. I can get blamed. Right. And so a good coach or a good mentor, a good peer, a good board of advisors is going to ask very – and to Larry's point, he goes, the warning from that I was grateful for because mm -hmm. people come to him with ideas all the time. Yeah. And he goes, I've heard this multiple times. People still do the same strategy. Not one has actually fulfilled it. The warning. It's truth. He was just being honest. The warning in yeah. that. It's not a negative. Yeah. He just goes, I've never, maybe you're different. Yeah. And that was enough warning to go, there's a temptation. Yeah. There's a temptation when you get a flood of cash that. coming back in. And thank God for that. And I knew I needed to move swift. And so the movement for that strategy was six months. And then wow. I sold the house. Awesome. It was done. Right. And then awesome. leveled through. Yeah. And the rest is history now. Right. Love it. And that's how I got into real estate yeah. was that if I would have messed up that one move and if it wasn't for these board of advisors, 
I wouldn't be where I am today. Great strategy. You know what I mean? But yeah, it was like, it took awesome. the sheer warning, and that's a brutal warning. Yeah, it is. Hey, maybe you're different, yeah. but everyone else has failed. Yeah. And an opportunity, right, for you to go inward and check within yourself, like, is, right? Like, is this right? Should I do this? Is this right for me? And then, But then you realize the task at hand, the measurement. You're like, oh, right. crap, this is going to be extremely hard. Right. Not num- numerically, but temptation-wise. Mm. Because I don't have, because if I'm in this position, because I've had bad financial habits. Right. And what he's warning about is, can you break your habit? Love that. I got you in this. Yeah. Can you break your habit? Yeah. Because everybody else I know who has this idea, it's a great idea on paper. But the temptation. But they don't have, they have the bad habits. They immediately go in and get in more debt on, 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 on depreciating assets. Beautiful. And my whole thing, I was wanting to tie this principle to appreciating assets, mm. my, to break generational poverty. Awesome, man. Right? And so I don't know if that, if yeah, that's no, just great. I, I lo- that's, like that's I'm, a great I'm quiet because I'm just letting yeah. it soak in. This yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. So I, I, I love dialoguing with you about this stuff because it really is so practical. Yeah. Yeah. And people don't realize like you, you, the decision is theirs. Mm-hmm. You can, no one, and it's so frustrating when you get good advisors um, and counselors because you just want them to tell you what to do. Yeah, you, and, you do. And, and, you and do. if, if part of our pattern is person. if part of our pattern is like you were saying, looking for that affirmation, is your coming to this council part of you just wanting to to hear what you want to hear? Sometimes, yeah. Right? And then you <laughs> exactly. don't really like, oh. ah. or the the most frustrating part is this guy knows exactly what I need to do and he will not tell me. Right. He will simply just give me the next step. And I have to figure this crap out. Man, are you kidding me? Can you just save me a little bit? And the best yeah. supervisor as a therapist I ever had would do that to me. She knew. So frustrating. I mean, she knew day one of Annoying. me coming in what I needed yeah. a year yeah. from then. Yeah. And she would just let me sit with it's it. And, she w- and it was perfect. It's the it, journey. It's, it's the, it's, it was the year I learned the most about myself. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's 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 amazing. This is awesome. So so now, so how long have you been practicing? So at 32, 33, you, uh, you went and... St- Went back to college. You've been to college before. Uh, no, so I um, through uh, getting my um, EMT and paramedic uh, licenses, I did enough courses to get my AA, right? Okay. And so what happened after that? And you know, funny again, going going, but you know, it's coming around full circle. The the guy that didn't think he was college material, I was crushing it in in those classes and doing yeah. really really well. I was at the top of my paramedic class in terms of you know uh, grades and such. Um, and so when I decided that I was going to take this next step, um, not only did I want to get this doctorate degree a, as a way of sort of helping me do the work, you know, that I can then serve others, but it was a challenge to myself, mm-hmm. Mr. I'm not college material. Um, so I stayed on the fire department and got my bachelor's degree online mm-hmm. uh, in psychology. Uh, and then after I got that, I decided to just walk away. And it was, it was, it was a scary, scary, scary move. Right. Uh, but I, I went from leaving this career to being a, a full-time student again for the next, you know, five years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that was, is that, how old are you now? I just turned 45 a couple weeks ago. Happy birthday. Thank you, sir. Happy Thank birthday. You. 45. 45. <coughs> so you've had 12 years since you felt this decision. Yeah. What has been the top three greatest things that you've now looking back that if you could tell your 32-year-old self three things, what would you say to yourself? Wow. I would say get out of your head. And trust yourself. That would be one. Um, um, yeah, I, 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 let me just sit on this because there's so much no, you're emotion. Good. You're good, there's so yeah. much emotion yeah. coming up for me right now. You know, um, the second thing I would say is um, it's going to be okay, regardless of what happens, regardless of the obstacles, regardless of how many times you fall on your face. Mm. It's going to be okay in the end. You're going to get back up. You're going to figure a way around it, over it, through it, but you'll be okay. And the third thing would be um, keep your focus on others, not on yourself. Mm. I've realized that when I'm in my head or focused on what I'm going to gain from something, I get lost. But if I put my focus on serving, if I put my focus on how is my growth going to help other people mm. where they may be. Um, there's, there's this level of, of just like passion and gratitude and, um, and ease with which life starts to be lived. 
Mm, when you're serving people. Yeah. 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 There, there's truth to that. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. There's absolute truth to that. It's that's good wisdom. Thank you. It's good advice. Thank you. Yeah. That's um. Man, there's so much truth to that. When um, when your when your focus is on yourself, right? That's such a scarcity play. Yeah. Because you're in just a survival mode. Survival. And so many people that I've met that are in that survival mindset, they don't even realize when they've actually made it, and they just keep going. Yeah. Because they're never, they're always afraid that they'll have nothing again. Right. They just keep going and going and going and going. I I, I lived from that place, you know, and I'm still coming out of that wiring in in some ways, right? Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, if you didn't grow up with a lot of resources, it is wired in because you remember you go, oh, man. Yeah, that was, I remember what, right. it, how fast it can, and breaking that is yeah. so hard. Yeah, and, it, and it, you know, I, I always say this, but like emotions will hijack logic and reason. So you can sit there and, and reason with it all day and know, know where it's coming from, but the emotion of, of fear, of risk taking, mm-hmm. I mean, that'll that'll sort of pop in. And if you don't know what to do with it, you, f- you, you find yourself living from that scarcity mindset oh, always. The, the wisdom that we could give people, I mean, just in, in real estate alone, right? was when the pandemic hit. Mm. This is when I, so I had this real soul-searching moment. It was like, and thank God I had these rhythms and patterns in my life. Already set. Right? Because it would have been chaos for my family. I would have left $250,000 on the table is what wow. I would have left on the table wow. over a two-year period. Yeah. Because I go, oh, no, the world's collapsing. I better sell my house now because I don't know if I'll ever get it back again. Mm. Right? That's the yeah. thought. So you had to pause, pray, press right. it, press it. Right. And they go, that's not the right motive. If I'll ever get it back again, no, I'm going to go run numbers. Why? Because yeah. math never lies. Yeah. yeah. I ran numbers and then was like, now I think I'm going to hold this. Self-reflection. Yeah, you it's self-reflection. Self-reflection. All reflection. It is. But it's making sure you're giving it enough time. Totally. Because at the end of the day, you're moving too quick. Right. Man. And, and, you know, just to, to for, for folks out there listening, I mean, a lot of what we're talking about here is just emotional intelligence, so right? Connecting EQ. the mind and the heart and the, and the gut. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And there's so much to that, right? Yeah. Um, this is a great conversation. I didn't realize, you know, we're, we're, we're going at this for like almost an hour. Oh, wow. Isn't that awesome? It's pretty great. That's, you know, serendipity has occurred. Yeah. I love it. I like that word. It's I one of my favorite it. words. Right? I love like, it. This just happened, you know, yeah, just yeah, serendipitous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we've got this, uh, I have these questions because I am a learner. And I always talk, uh, and people, I don't know what episode is this now. This is uh, seventh, eighth? Yeah, so seventh, seventh interview. And so <clears throat> I, I really started doing these because I just wanted to get to know my community more because yeah. I'm, I'm in this great experiment with you not knowing what I'm doing, right? right? Uh, and being very uncomfortable and embracing that uncomfort. Uh, okay, I don't know how this works. I don't know what this is or that is or even what the right decision. But, but part of your P is <laughs> you're pressing into it. Yeah, exactly, right. right? And so part of this is just getting understanding of why people have bought in and adopted mm-hmm. this idea that we're in, yeah. you know, uh, called Cress. Yeah. And so the, the first question is, why, why did you join Cress? Yeah. Because you were like a like an early adopter. You were one of the first 20. Yeah. But, you know, during our soft launch phase. And yeah. so you were you yeah. saw this and... And so why, why did you join? Yeah, so uh, David Henning put this on my radar, mm-hmm. right? And, and David and I had, had been friends for some years. Um, and, and sort of the way he sold it to me, that's what grabbed me in that moment, was, you know, here's a community of people um, that want to support each other around these items that were really important to me in my life. Mm-hmm. Professionally, family, and spirituality. Mm. And... Um, you know, entrepreneurship and, and, and sort of growth and, and development, but those first three being the, the, the ones that sort of, I was like, yeah, that. Um, and what I can share is, you know, in, in my time being here, every time I show up at this place, um, some part of that is being fed for me. It's awesome. So maybe I have a conversation with somebody that, of what they're doing professionally. And it has, again, it has nothing to do with me or my job, yeah, or, yeah. but just in listening to their story, I'm learning something. Mm-hmm. Or I might, I mean, just earlier today, I had a conversation with somebody um, uh, spiritual in nature that just helped cement something that I had been dealing with this week. Mm. And I was like, oh yeah, that, Carlos, trust yourself. That's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. Um, 
so it, it's just, there's so much value that I derive from this place um, that I just want to keep showing up and, and hopefully be of, of value to others in, mm. in, in just my presence here. Right. Because um, community, that's that's one of the things that I'm really, you know, for a lot of years, I thought I had to do life on my own. Right. And when you come from that scarcity, fear mentality, Mm -hmm. you learn to live a life where you're like, no, I got this. I don't need your help. You know, I'll figure it out. And late, you know, later on in my life, I realized that man, that's that's no way to live, man. There's there's people out there that want to help you, that want to support you, that want to build you up. And if you can start to trust in that, that community um, the, the sky's truly, truly the limit, mm. Jeremy. So I, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, I came by here the other day and we prayed together. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. and, and, you know, I'll, I'll share this with you. I was going to share it with you off the air, but I'll share it w- with you here now. Um, for the last two weeks, I was the, the, the I was sort of struggling with, with not finding the spirit that I usually have mm. been having. And after, you know, our prayer and some other things that evolved over the day that came, now today I'm, I'm feeling back in his grace That's and awesome. feeling really amazing. Yeah. Um, and, and that was just a, a five minute conversation yeah. that we had. So yeah. I, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for um, what you're creating here, for the spirit that you bring here, for the value that you bring here. Um, like I, I just, you know, I, I just want to show up and give. Yeah, and that's 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 what that's that, what man. you're. Uh, when you're when you lead from that place, it it, it really inspires others yeah. to do. That was, our, that was our first time, like even praying together. I yeah, don't, I don't do yeah. that very quickly, you yeah. know, all the yeah. time. And so I just felt it yeah. in my heart that hey, thank let me you pray for, that. for you. Yeah, yeah, that you know? that was really a, a a really heartfelt moment for me. Thank of you. Of course, yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's that's the beauty of of just humanity. Like we're, we, so many of us come from different faiths and different beliefs right. and different. But it doesn't mean that we just can't sit there and be like, hey, you know what? In my belief, do you mind if I exercise my belief with you? Totally. Right? And that's what yeah. that, you know what I mean? Just let me pray yeah. for you. Of course. Yeah. yeah, I love that. You yeah. know, and that's the beauty of it. And totally. And it works. It does. I have no clue how. I, you know, I was, it just works. I was <laughs> stricken by something somebody showed me uh, or told me the other day. Um, that one football player, I didn't watch the game, but had that uh, heart uh, oh, yeah. moment, right? Yeah, yeah. And what she reflected to me was how it was so amazing to see that, um, when that was going on and people didn't know sort of what was happening, um, everyone in that stadium quieted down, started holding hands and started to pray mm. like this, this us versus them sort of environment completely yeah. disappeared. And as a humanity, we came together as community to, to, to pray, to, to go into our compassionate hearts and mm. wish betterment for other people. And I think when we start to strip away all of the conditioning, the wiring, all of this stuff that we deal with in life, and we get to that place, that quiet, compassionate mm-hmm. heart space, that's where we start to live from a place of abundance. Yeah, empathy. and Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So what have you gotten out of this space that you weren't expecting to get out of it? And now you're like, wow, this is yeah. this a bonus. I wasn't um, even thinking about that when yeah. I first joined. Uh, friendships, man. We, yeah. we just developing some really cool friendships and conversations with people. And um, it, it, almost like when people are here, they're just in, in a good, like in a good vibe and a good energy. Right. Um, so I, I wasn't expecting to develop such, such good friendships here. And it's, it's been, it's been awesome. That's it awesome. Really man. Yeah. And th- this is always the one for me to learn. Yeah. What can we do better that we're failing at right now that yeah. we haven't thought about yet that yeah. we we're, what are we missing what am i missing personally yeah. as, a, as a leader yeah. that we could just man just that would just be the ne- take this take people in their lives to that just that next level that they need to go to that we can facilitate here yeah as, you know what, what are we failing at that we're not doing well at what are you know i celebrate failures in a, in a great way yeah um What's coming up for me right now is that one of the conversations that you and I have had throughout the last almost year, right, is how do we get that message out there? Yeah. Right? How do we let people know that we're here? And I don't, it can, it can feel when you're, when you're a business owner and an entrepreneur and someone who's an achiever, right, that, that somehow we're failing in that or that you're failing in that or your mm-hmm. team is failing in that. But here's something I want to share with you that has sort of come to me recently, that some of the most powerful and groundbreaking um, things that I need to know come to me in almost a whisper. Mm -hmm. They come to me in, in, you know, a a back alley, a, a, Mm -hmm. a little story, something, somebody, you know, somebody said, and that, um, 
I truly believe that as long as you continue to do this amazing work and provide this amazing space, right now out there, it's a whisper about what's going on at Chris. Yeah, it is. It is right? a It's whisper. soft. Yeah, yeah. And I ha- I, there's a part of me that just believes that when that whisper starts to spread further and further through, this place is going to be everything and beyond for people. Just organically. Organically. Yeah. It's, gonna, it's just going to be organic. That is the stressor. Of like, That's how the it. heck do we do this? Yeah. How do we do that? So yeah. I think all of the traditional ways in which businesses and mm-hmm. social media has helped people build, it may not be there. It might be something different. It might be. And I think where I'm at is like, you can turn the switch on and get right. it done, right? Right, right, right. But it's like protecting the infrastructure, yes. right? Because you yeah. want to scale it. You yeah. pr- protect the infrastructure yeah. of the culture. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. kind of where I, I really aspire to the um, the Jim Collins good to great crawl, walk, run. Yeah. Right. And so for me, it's identifying, all right, when are we out of the crawl yeah. stage? When are we in the walking right. stage? And trying not to grow too quickly. Right. You right. know, and that's, again, talking to entrepreneurs all the time. Yeah. Well, Embrace th- the crawl. Exactly, right? There's so much to be learned from the crawl. What is the Marines thing? Embrace the suck? Yeah. Right? Isn't that what <laughs> yeah, it is? Yeah. Embrace the suck. Totally. Just embrace totally. it. Yeah. And I think of that all the time. Right. Embrace the suck, yeah. you know? And yeah. uh, the last, I, I've never. Which is d- hard to do, but. It is, you know. yeah. I've never dealt with anxiety until the last, like, three, four years. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, it's definitely near, not, not as bad as most people, but right. I've started having a lot more empathy for people that deal with, you know, chronic anxiety. Cause totally. I was always very positive. Right, and, right, right. But now we're really aspiring yeah. to, to do some, yeah. some beyond, beyond us yeah. things that just goes, how do I even do this? And anxiety and fear, right? This has been a, such a topic of today's conversation, but, um, for any listeners out there, just know that by the very nature of being on the path of growth, yeah, you are constantly going to be challenging yourself. Mm-hmm. And when we feel challenged, fear and anxiety is going to arise. It's not a bad thing. It's a thing to work through because yeah. it'll just take us to that next level. Mm. So embrace it. Yeah, I, I don't know where, where Todd Hawkins got this from, but he said like last week, he said so many people live in the gap. Yeah. And the gap is human nature is to chase the horizon. Mm. Um, and that horizon can be, you can achieve your dream 10 seconds later, you're no longer fulfilled by that dream. You can buy a house. That's your dream house. And then in 10 seconds, you can go to the window and look up on the hill and see a much bigger house and go one day I'll live there. 10 seconds ago, this is your dream house one day. And that's a real story that Todd was sharing with with one of his friends. And he goes, so many people live in the gap. Yeah. Over there, and they're just chasing yeah. the horizon, chasing perfection. And he goes, and now this is what's really trend on lately, but it's progress over perfection, right? Mm-hmm. But that's been something that's going like has been said for decades yeah. with Todd and some of these guys in these groups. Um, and it's that living in the now and celebrating the progress, right. looking back and go, "Wow, I can't believe what what we've accomplished." Yeah. I want to go to time. the other side of that house <clears throat> where I can look down the mountain and say, "Wow." Used to be down there. That's exactly right. Look where and, I'm at now. And that is that attitude of right. gratitude. Yes. Right. And it's yeah. so important to maintain a heart of gratitude. Game changer. Right. Be, I'm grateful for where I'm at. Yeah. I don't want to compare myself yeah. to where this person's at. Yeah. Because our tendency is often to compare ourselves. It, it, it's funny, right? Like somebody said the other day, like, you won't compare yourself to Tom Brady. Right. Because you don't have his skills. Yeah. You don't have his money. You probably don't have his wife, right? Like, or his, his now what, ex-wife? I yeah. think they're, they're getting divorced, uh, yeah. right? But but we, we're not going to compare ourselves to people that are too far out of our ability. Because well, we idolize that. Right, right. Oh, oh, man, if I could just get there. Right. You know? But we will compare ourselves to people that have just a little bit more than us. We don't have the tendency to sort of compare ourselves or compare our situation to people that have less. No, there's so much gap, right? There's so much gap. So much. And it's all about, it is the mindset and perspective that comes along with all that. And it's, it's envisioning yourself where you're going to be at, why you're going to be there, but it's just setting your vision, but understanding I'm going to enjoy this now. Here is pretty great. Yeah. But it's also knowing I'm content. Right. But now that it's in me. Right. To do more. Right. Not because I need more, yeah, not because, exactly. but because it's in me to simply made a, make a bigger impact. Right. And I think that is in the, the gratitude mindset of, well, why do you need this? Why, and it's just go, because we can just make a greater impact. Mm-hmm. And I think that's even where I came with Crest. It was like, yeah. I got to this point where we were like, you yeah, pretty dang good. This is yeah. awesome. If we yeah. keep the path going, we'll live a very comfortable, very comfortable life. Our kids and grandkids will be taken care yeah. of. 
it worked. And then you go, yeah, but, man, I think this would be very selfish if we just held this culture together. Because we were living this. We've lived this for a long time, mm. culturally. Everything yeah. that we're experiencing yeah. at Crest. Yeah. And I'm encouraged that we've scaled it yeah. beyond five people, right. six right. people, right? right? And yeah. you go, wow, this is actually working. Yeah. People are, are gravitating towards this. And, uh, but it really, I mean, this whole space was originally just upstairs. It was just supposed to be me and my boys hanging right, out. Right, you know, right, that right, was right. it. Yeah, and, I remember so those now, early conversations yeah, with and you. And so now we yeah. go, oh, man, this is like, this is real. Like, we're really in this all in. we got a movement and, uh, here, buddy. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. And, and so, and, and it, but what it is for me is it's, it's um, empowering people to simply have a space. But going, dude, I ain't going to do that. Like, it's like, right. you have this passion to do this. I'll support you. <laughs> and right. I think that's what's like throwing some people because people will bring an idea. Be like, that's a great idea. When do you want to schedule it to run that? Right. right. Like, no, no, no. Yeah. I thought you would do this. Yeah. Like, no, <laughs> no, I did this. Right. You right. do that part. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it's, and I think that's a humanity. They almost yeah. need that permission. Yeah. Like, no, this is a really cool space. It's a blank canvas. Love that. Paint your passions here. Totally. Right. And that's totally. the thrive connect. Yeah. Dream. And, and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of my own perspective on that in those sort of conversations you and I have had, it, it's stopped me in my tracks and, and been like, Oh, can I trust this? <laughs> yeah. Right. Cause oh, I, I think, I think a lot, deal. a lot of people don't, yeah. don't trust that. Like, Oh, this guy's, this, this guy's real. This is real. You just got to earn it. Yeah. I, I know yeah, that yeah, yeah. it's like, I'll earn yeah. this. That's yeah. a, it's uphill battle. Someone's got to earn it. I love it. You know, cause it's very, you, it's a very rare thing. Yeah. 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 I think it's probably why I'm, I'm so committed to the slow and steady totally. rather than totally. like, the quick and yeah, easy. This place is great, man. Well, we love you, man. This is a great Everybody. podcast. I think we're yeah, we did good. We did good on this one. I, yeah. I wanted to run with this. I wanted another Leo. Um, me and Leo just went way too long. Really? Like, it was like two hours. Oh too, my yeah, and I was like, yeah. oh man. All right, well, uh, so I'm trying to gauge my time a little bit better. <laughs> I love it. Love but um, great for, chat. For, yeah, man, this is awesome. Yeah. I, let's do Appreciate this again. You. Let's do it. When are you releasing your podcast? Little, little, uh, little you should jab, use this little space. jabby jab. Yeah, should use this. This is a nice space. And you've got such good content. Thank you. You do. Thank you you, you yeah. really do. And um, I think you have a different perspective. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest with you. Yeah. So. I think I, I shared with you, um, um, I've set the intention for 2023 to go deeper inward. I've, uh, you know, through therapy, through books, through so much stuff, I've, I've really come to understand um the way I function, why mm -hmm. I do things. And, uh, now on the brink of being a new father, uh, I want to know myself much deeper. So mm -hmm. 2023 is about, um, sort of just scaling back a little bit, taking yeah. some time off, That's good. just doing some reflecting and finding, um, that inner peace so that I can listen better to what the next step should be. Absolutely. Well, guys, Dr. Carlos Garcia, you have a website. You have your books or anything like that you've written? No, I don't have any of Not that yet, stuff. Huh? No. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Gotta write a yeah, book. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I've been writing a book for like ten years. But yeah. it, you know, every five years, my life changes so much that I'm like, okay. Oh yeah, we talk time. about that a little yeah, offline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you just release it and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. um, it's the the progress over yeah, it, right? Yeah. So. Uh, how, how can people get get in touch with you if they want to? Yeah, well, they, they can follow out. me on my new handle, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the entrepreneur psychologist on the Instagram entrepreneur or, psychologist. Yeah, or Facebook. That's a, good, a website? that's a good way to find me. Well, I have my company's website, Tampa counseling and wellness.com. Yeah, I mean, it's a practice. Yeah, people can actually totally. hire you and your team. Yeah. Yeah. If they, need, yeah. they just need someone to talk to anybody you, that's sort of struggling with something in life, relationships, anxiety, PTSD, depression, um, and I myself work a lot with, you know, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. business owners on mindset issues. So yeah. if they want to reach out to me that way, they're more than welcome to. Yeah. Also. So what's, what's your company's w website? Do you guys do online counseling as well? We do. Or is it just if, in, if it's in, in the state of Florida. Yeah. So it has to be in Florida. So yeah. anyone watching yeah. in Florida, uh, Dr. Carlos is yeah. a great resource, um, great listener and just, uh, you got it in you. You just may need someone to help draw it out of That's you. All. Right? That's so all. So what's your website? Yeah, tampacounselingandwellness.com. Tampacounselingandwellness.com. Where we'll it's okay there. not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. Absolutely. It's a great song, by the way. <laughs> I'll have to share that with you. A buddy of mine wrote a song on it. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Yeah.